is Megan and I'm here in McMurdo Station, Antarctica with the Polar Earth Observing Network, or POLNET. POLNET is bringing together scientists and engineers from 28 countries to study changes in the polar regions. Antarctica is a very dynamic place that experiences changes all of the time. Some of these changes are pretty big, we can see them with our naked eye. Like if you look back behind me at the sea ice runway, those airplanes are actually sitting on only a few meters of ice. And over the next few weeks, that ice is going to get thinner and thinner until it's no longer safe to land in that area. During some years, if it's especially warm, that might actually turn into open water. Other changes in the regions are much more difficult to see. They happen at a much slower and smaller scale. And so we need special instrumentation to be able to measure these changes. And these are the kinds of changes that PolNet is interested in capturing and studying. It's summertime down here, and so we're taking advantage of the 24 hours of daylight and the warmer temperatures to install GPS and seismic stations across the continent. At the GPS sites for the PolNet project, we're measuring how the bedrock moves. Initially, we're principally interested in the uh, horizontal motion of these sites during the predecessor project, Wagon. It turns out most of these sites are not moving very much in their horizontal, but we figured out that uh, the vertical signal is very interesting here. Sites are moving up. As the ice disappears, the weight that's pushing down on the bedrock decreases and the bedrock uh, rises. So as the ice goes away, there's less weight pushing down and the bedrock rises in response. And we're measuring very precisely how fast the rock is rising. As it turns out, we can use satellite observations to understand continental scale changes of the ice in Antarctica. If you can imagine a satellite that observes changes in elevation of the surface of the ice, you could imagine that through time, if that elevation increases, then you would expect the ice to be increasing in volume. But in reality, in order to know whether or not that elevation is really increasing in the ice, you need to know what is happening at the bedrock underneath, because you don't know if that surface elevation is due to changes in bedrock or changes in the ice. So in reality, while we can directly observe what the bedrock's doing at our GPS sites, our GPS data can also be used to improve measurements from satellite-based techniques, and this is one of the main reasons why PolNet has such a broad-scale impact. Here in McMurdo, we're taking advantage of all the great people and facilities that help us gather our gear, get our team together, work with our mountaineers to train for some conditions that we might face out in the field, and also to use twin otters and helicopters to reach some of our sites that are actually located closer to McMurdo. So when we're getting ready for our flights, the first thing we check is the weather. And the weather is always unpredictable in Antarctica, so we need to stay poised and ready to go and always have a positive attitude. Cargo is one of our biggest logistical challenges. This year we brought down six tons of gear from the various institutions across the United States to McMurdo Station. And from McMurdo Station we have to ship out gear such as solar panels, boxes, wind turbines, and GPS frames. And we've had a great cargo crew that's helped us to get everything organized, packed away, weighed, and to the various field camps that they need to go to. In a couple of days, we're going to be flying out to Bird Camp, which is about a three, three and a half hour flight west of here. And from Bird, we're going to be able to reach most of our sites located across West Antarctica. This is really a huge season for the Antarctic Polnet team. We've got eight of our toughest sites to install yet, and we plan on visiting as many of the 44 sites that we already have in place as we can possibly get to in the next two months. Right now we're at McMurdo and we have about 12 sites that we fly to from McMurdo Station. We've been here for a couple weeks and we've only been to three of them so far. Tonight we're going to make our fourth attempt to get to Brimstone Peak, which is our northernmost site about 180 miles north of McMurdo. But you can read more about that saga on our blog. And we hope to get a couple more site visits in before the Thanksgiving holiday, which is this coming weekend, but time's running a little short, so we'll see what we get done. And the good news is that our first team made it to Bird today, so they're working on our cargo. The rest of the team will get out there next week, and we've got over 30 sites that we're going to do from there. It's our major feat of the season, so please wish for good weather for us.